Hi, in today's video, we're going to focus on slow stitching a fabric acorn. Now this acorn can be used just as a slow stitching project for the enjoyment and the pleasure of pulling thread through fabric, or it can be used as a coaster, or, and I'll show you today in class, you can poke a hole and hang it as an ornament. Now I show all the steps from start to finish, and we start with choosing our fabric. We make our own template so the acorn can be as small or as large as you like. I like to choose fun fabrics that have already been embroidered or have texture to them. And then I just do simple stitching around. Basically, I look at the fabric and see what can I do to enhance the fabric. So it's just a few simple stitches, it takes me an afternoon to do, and I find it very enjoyable. Now the first thing I do is I make my template, and I'll show you how I do that. So here I have three examples of the acorn that we're going to do in class. And the beauty of it is, is you can hang it and you can use it as a little ornament, or you can use it as just a little coaster for your drinks. So it can be purposeful as well as adorable. So the way I start is by creating my template. And I just take a piece of scrap cardstock here. This is just the backing to some paper. And I sketch out the size that I want to use for my acorn. And I just kind of make a rounded top for the cap. A nice thick stem. I can modify this further if I want. And then the bottom of the acorn. Now I like to make it rounded. Some people like to put a point to the acorn. And then to make it easier, I just make a generic cap. And I make this basically as an oval with the stem. And I'll play around when I cut it out to make sure it fits right on top of the cardstock here. So I'll just cut it out. And it's approximately the size of the ones I've made. It might be a little bit bigger, and I can always trim that down. And if I wanted small acorns, I would just make a small template as well. The beauty of this is, because it's such a large shape, a large silhouette, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll just take my main size, Put the cap on top of it and just trace that cap over it just to make sure that I have that size correct. And then I'll cut that out along with that size that I just corrected. Now all of these sizes can be adjusted further according to what I want, but I can just double check that it fits, and it does. Now I have some modifications in the acorn cap. Here I have it rounded, approximately the same size that I made. Same thing here. And here, I just took it and created a little oval here. And that's easy enough to eyeball on the actual fabric. And I'll show you my technique for that as we go. So now that I have my template, the next stage is to select the fabric. I particularly care for this neutral fabric. And this happened to be a repurposed pillowcase that I was using because I really, I saved it because I love the embroidery on it. I found this fabric that I liked with this ticking here, these stripes, and then I just slow stitched additional texture in there using beige thread. And on this one, I found this tablecloth. It was mostly stained, but I salvaged a good piece of it, and I love it for the texture for the acorn. And for the cap, I just took some quilted fabric and re-emphasized that quilting just to get that texture. And here was just a very simple acorn. I used just this plaid flannel, because I think it's adorable, and I just stitched around it to make that simple texture. So for this one, I punched a hole in the center and added a grommet so I could hang it. And I'll show you that technique today on the one we do in class. So now the next stage is to select our fabric and cut that out as well. So here are some of the fabrics that I was contemplating using. This was an old napkin that I repurposed and I already traced around it with the template for the acorn. So I think I'm going to use that for the main body, this part of the acorn. But I have some other fabrics that I really like. This upholstery fabric is kind of fall colors and it's quite beautiful. I enjoy using that. And I have this just beige fabric. Then I have this quilted piece, which I love for using for the cap. So I think I'll use that for the cap. And then I have this fabric that I can use for the backing. And this is just part of an old quilt. So I'll take my templates and just 
I'll trace them with a Frixian pen here, just so I have the right shape. Now for the backing, I just go over the shape and this pen will come out with either an iron or some hot air from a hairdryer. So when I'm all done, if there are any marks remain, I can just cut them out from there. Here, because I have that stitching, I just want to make sure my template lined up nicely, and it does. I can just go over it again. And I'll cut out on that wide line. And now for my cap, because there's already stitching on this fabric, I can decide if I want to use that stitching to my advantage by the angle of the stitching. I can either turn it to its side or straight up and down, which is what I think I'll do. And once again, I'll take my pen and go around it. Now I know I want to create that missing piece in it, so I'll kind of just eyeball it right now, but I'm not going to cut it out. The next stage now is cutting out my fabric from my template. I'll start with the acorn top. So I have my three pieces here. I have my backing, my piece here, which will be the bottom piece of this acorn, and then my cap. Again, with my cap, I can decide if I want to move the fabric down or if I'm just going to cut out a little piece. So I think I'll do that. Again, I'll just make that line and I like to just sketch it in just so I know where it is. And it should fit nicely there, going right to the edge. So I'll cut that out right away now that I know it's going to fit. And ultimately, that's what my acorn cap will look like. And I'm happy with that. So I'll take a pin and just pin that into place. And now I can start working on my stitching. The beauty of this acorn, because it already has the stitching, is I don't have to do too much to it. And I can also play off the stitching and add more if I want to. So now I just want to stitch the acorn cap to this piece here, leaving this backing untouched. I want to stitch a line on whatever stitch I want to use, either a straight stitch or a chain stitch, right across the perimeter of the top of this acorn. So I'll take my fabric and I'll take my thread and I want the outline of this acorn to be this pale brown, whereas I think I'm going to use the um, texture on the acorn cap in this pink because it corresponds with the stitching that's already there. And that's how I make my decision. I just choose based on what exists. So I have this nice light brown here, and this is going to be the outline. So I'm going to stitch not only the base of the acorn cap, but ultimately I'll stitch all around the acorn when I attach it to my backing. So I like to start at one end here, and I just put my thread through it and pull it taut, and then I decide on a stitch. I can use a straight stitch, a back stitch. I think I'm just going to use a straight stitch. So I'm going to just go across, choosing the length of the stitch that I have here. And then I'll choose the spacing and the length and continue this all the way around the base of that acorn. I'm trying to keep all my stitches approximately the same size. And I'm just following that edge of that acorn. So now when I come to the end of that acorn cap, I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to go in a couple of stitches here and knot off my thread. I make a little loop and then I just pull my thread taut. So now the next stage, and this is where it starts to become artistic and fun, and this is where you 
add your own flair to it is where you want to embellish it further. I'm just going to create lines mimicking the lines that exist here. And because I like the lines that exist here, I can either do it halfway through or just offset from each of these lines. And I'm going to use the pink for that. So again, I only use a piece of thread about 18 to 24 inches long because I find that it knots very easily the longer it gets. It is a little bit of a nuisance to have to re-thread the needle, but it's more of a nuisance having to cut out stitches because of the thread getting tangled. So now I'm going to start here on the edge. I think I'm going to just start just maybe offset by a quarter inch or so. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a stem stitch. So I'm going to put my stitch length in, maybe another quarter of an inch, pull it down to make a loop, and then halfway through that stitch I'm going to come up underneath before I've pulled my stitch taut. Once I get my stitch in, I'll pull it a little taut. There's still a little loop there and that's okay because now I'm going to start my other stitch right down here and I'll pull everything taut now. Now if I pull it taut, I can always go back in, loosen that stitch so that I can find my way to continue this stitch and it makes a nice, beautiful line. And I'll do one more stitch to end this row. And now I'll continue doing all the rows just a little bit offset, about a quarter inch offset, parallel to these existing lines. So now I continue the perpendicular stitch to our first series, just to the right of the already existing stitch. So my acorn cap has its texture, and I'll just knot it on the back. I'll just knot this pink thread on the back. And now I can decide if I want to embellish it further, and this is where I would do it. But for now, I'm happy with that. I want to attach it to my backing. So I'll line it up right to the backing, put a pin in there to hold it in place. And this same stitch that I used around the base of the acorn cap, I'm going to use around the base of the acorn and around the perimeter all over. So I have my brown thread around my needle knotted into place. And now I'll just continue with this stitch around the base. I'm going to leave just a little space from the edge where I'm going to stitch because I can see that it's a little ragged and I'm going to trim that. But I also want to reach in here under these knots and push them under. It's okay if they show a little bit, but I don't really want them to show a lot. So I'll flip over my bottom piece my facing and start my stitches. And by doing this I can hide the knot as well. And then I'll just continue my stitch all the way around my acorn. Now I have just a little bit of thread left. I can do a few more stitches, but I'm going to go underneath here and knot it off with my knot hidden between the layers. And then I'll start a new thread to finish off the top of this acorn. At this point I can remove the pin that holds it in place and just make sure everything's lined up and then I'll finish sewing around and we'll come back and take a look at our work. So now I stitch around the perimeter of the top of the acorn, the cap. And I can really introduce a shape here even if it's not quite perfect with my fabric.
come across any areas where knots are sticking out, I can either clip them or retuck them. Then when I sewed my stitch all the way around my acorn, I'll just flip it over and make the tiniest stitch again and knot it off here. I'll clip it so it's barely noticeable. Now before I trim it, I'm going to take my iron and remove any of those marks so we see what we're actually working with. So now I'll take my iron and just set it on the highest setting that the fabric will tolerate. And then as you can see, I'm just pressing it along the areas where I have that marker and it's gone just like that. So now from here, I just want to take my scissors and just trim this up ever so slightly. Keep my scissors straight so that I'm trimming through all those layers and I just make small controlled cuts all the way around wherever I think it needs it. So here's my completed acorn. And if I want to use this as a coaster, it's already set just like that. However, if I want to hang it, you'll need a few tools. So to do that, I have this grommet set. And I, I believe they're quarter inch grommets. Now, if you buy the set, it's very reasonably priced and expensive, and you have all these different colors. It also comes with a couple of tools here for you to poke the hole in your fabric. You just set that down where you want your hole on a, and you use a mat underneath it, like a protective mat, and then you'll pound that and it'll cut that hole. And then from there, you choose your grommet. Now, I don't like to use the tools it comes with. I just have one of these tools. You can also buy something very similar in your sewing section for grommets. It's the same procedure, but this is a do-it-all tool. I think it's called a crocodile. It's made for scrapbooking, but it cuts through other things like leather and fabric. So I choose the right hole setting, because this has multiple sizes, and I pierce that hole through all my fabric. I can line it up to see exactly where I want it. I want that hole right here where that grommet's going to go, and then I just punch like a regular hole punch. Then it has my fabric. I like to clip off that little piece of fabric, but as you can see, it has a nice little hole now. I'm not done with the tool because now I need it for the grommet. This particular set comes with a bunch of colors for the grommet. There's also metallic, but there's also dark colors, fall colors, and so on. I'm just gonna use a little black one. It also comes with these little pieces on the back which are little flat, what I call just back covers to the grommet. And this comes all in the kit. I take my grommet and I place it right inside that hole because that's ultimately how it's going to look. So ultimately, I'm going to take my cover and put it on my grommet with the fabric sandwiched in between. But to get it set up so that the tool can be used, I like to set the tool in place first. And I don't press down all the way, I'm just making sure it's secure. I slide my cover into place. And then it catches it and I can press down and secure the grommet. And as you can see, it flattens out the grommet. And so I have my grommet so that just reinforces that hole. And so now my hanging ornament is almost ready. I just need to put in some thread to hang it. 
and I can add beads to this thread or I can just put the thread on itself. So I like just to take a nice, nice length of embroidery floss and I thread it through that hole. And then whatever size loop I want, I just give myself a little bit extra to work with and then I can make that loop. Tie both threads, pull them through that loop, and then I snip them off to trim them. And then I have a nice little loop to hang my ornament. So here's the ornament that we made in class today. We hung it up and you could see the backing. We have that plain backing fabric and the only stitches you see are the ones that we made that joined the front piece with the back piece. Here's one that I'm using as a coaster and I had the little cheat because I started with the embroidered piece of fabric that I salvaged and I used that as my focal point. I took some of this fabric here and if you look closely you can see these little stitches here along the way. And then I did that same technique to secure the cap and the base of the acorn. And there's the back of that one. And lastly we have this piece here with this little embroidery from that tablecloth. Same technique as from here. And I just used some interesting fabric for the backing, that upholstery fabric. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching me make my own fabric acorn. And I hope you make your own as well. And if you do, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see your work. Thanks for joining me. And stay tuned for a bunch of slow stitching classes for the Christmas season this year. I call it Stitch the Season.